Strudwick has never been to Montana. Last year, he was a puppy, and we had a dog sitter take care of him because it was too much. This year, we're like, he can do it. But, you know, you've heard the Strudwick stories, Dave. I anticipated that he would be a nightmare in the plane, so I went to his vet, and I said, is there anything I can give him to, like, calm him down? So she gave me this medicine that would make him sleepy. Well, <laughs> there was a side effect that was not disclosed. <laughs> and that Uh-oh. was, Uh-oh. it gave him the worst gas you have oh. ever had the misfortune to smell in your life. And oh. he was on board the airplane with us. So he, you know, they're SBDs when it comes from a dog. So it's yeah, just like yeah. You don't know, you don't know when the next one's coming. Just the the horrible toxic smell infiltrates your nostrils. And before you know it, you're like, there's no place to go. You can't in the car, you can press down the window. You know, you can get a little momentary reprieve. But in the airplane, i you can't light a match. Can't do anything. And it was nonstop. It took four hours and 10 minutes. I counted every single one to get from our, in Connecticut out there to, to New York out, out there. And it never let up. It was relentless. And the thing is, Dave, <laughs> the thing is, like, there's only one time, maybe two times, you can be like, it's my dog. Yeah. My dog has this. T- <laughs> <laughs> I take it that uh, I take it you bought a round of drinks for everybody on the plane when you landed (laughs) at the uh, little Montana place. uh, First of all, no, I was too traumatized. My trauma was too severe. And number two, I don't think it would have worked. I really think, like, at some point, you just have to give up and let people think it was you. Like, there's just no way. Did you say anything to anyone on the flight? You must have turned to somebody next to you or in front of you or something, right? Look. We were like this for the visual, for the listening audience. I have my tissues up by my neck. I live, the entire flight was like this. I was my, <laughs> breathing through my tissues. But they, they're, they're flimsy. The tissues are so flimsy, they did nothing. I needed a lead blanket. I needed like a, a couch. I needed something like way more substantial, like the x-ray thing they put on you when you go to get an x-ray, the drape. The, 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 the fiber wasn't strong enough to withstand the horrific odo I, order I was subjected to. I was in his little gas prison. And I couldn't move because the, I have a picture on the screen from the flight back where I was smart enough to take a picture to document my travails. But on the way out there, the truth is I was at the window seat and Strubbuck was at my feet and Doug was right next to me with thunder. And so I couldn't get out. I was like, and then my daughter was in front of me. She kept looking back like, mama, I can't save you, honey. I can't save you. <laughs> Wait, Megan, the, the real question here is, so what did you do on the flight back? Did you drug him again or did you? Okay, so so here's the story. So I, the, the vet had told me, give him the pills before you fly just to make sure he can handle, you know, nothing goes wrong. And I forgot to do that. So if I had done that before we flew, perhaps I would have understood they create a severe gas issue. <laughs> but I didn't. So flash forward to the middle of the vacation, and I was like, okay, may, was, it the, was it the pills or wasn't it the pills? I'm like, I'm going to give him one because the vet said give him two. So I'm like, I'm going to give him one tonight in my house to see if it's the pills. Well, just so I chose the wrong night because we were having people over. And <laughs> we put the dogs in our bedroom so they wouldn't be bothering everybody, you know, jumping up and like eating all the hors d'oeuvres, all that stuff. Well, Doug goes to open up the door to put somebody's like coat in the in the bedroom, and she sees the two dogs who are very cute. I mean, that can't take that away from Strud for all of his issues. He's very cute, and she goes over to Leah. Oh, how, and she stops dead in her tracks. She's like, <gasps> <laughs> the penetration of the hideous odor, and she was too polite to say anything. But then once again, you're like, ah, oh, it's, our, it's our gassy dogs in our in our bed, <laughs> and then you feel inappropriate talking about farts all the time. <laughs> You know, Megan, I have a, a question for you, which is, did you ever see the episode of Seinfeld? I think it's season nine where Kramer takes dog medication for a cough he has. I'm wondering, did you think maybe you should take the pills, see how it affected your <laughs> stomach, and that way the dog wouldn't have to go through this again? No, no. Let me tell you something. No human could produce those odors. Like, if, you, if you're a connoisseur of gas, you know that no humor, no human can— Like, that, that was my best defense. Like, a human being could not have made that smell. <laughs> and then, Dave, then, Sherry on top of the whole Sunday. Strud goes to bed one night, and he has horrific diarrhea. My husband's oh. walking him outside. He's like, uh-oh, Strud's got diarrhea. I'm like, oh, God. So we put him in his crate, sleeps in a crate. We put it right outside of our room so we can hear him if he starts crying and needs to go out in the middle of the night. Well, 
I don't know if we didn't hear it or if, it would, if he didn't cry, but it wasn't until like 5 a.m. the next day he starts crying, crying, crying. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll take him. And this was like, I was very proud of myself. I wrote about this in my American News Minute. If you subscribe, you'll get the full story. It comes out on Fridays. Anyway, um, MeganKelly.com. Um, I was very proud of myself, Dave, because Doug had taken them out every morning, every morning of the entire vacation. He's such a trooper. He likes, he likes being with them, but he also, it's, it's a little early. So I'm like, I got it tomorrow, honey. It's supposed to be really cold and, and Strud's not feeling well. I got it. Mistake. 5 a.m. I go out there. The entire crate is covered in dog shit. I mean, like oh. liquid dog shit. Forgive me. But it was like such a disaster. I'm like, <gasps> it, was like it was all over the floor. It was all over the pad. That stuff wasn't salvageable. So I'm like, oh my God. Okay, I'm going to get Strudwick outside. So which I, I do. We can't leave him out there. Like at home, I leave him in our lawn for a little right. while while. Can't, it's Montana. There are moose. There are foxes. It's dark. It's scary. You're on the mountain. It's like, no. So he has to come back in. So I put him in the garage. I'm cleaning up the, the area where I keep his crate. And I, I mean, it is like just a tidal wave of dog crap. And um, then I look over him in the garage with the doors open. I can see him. Projectile vomiting. What was projectile out the rear end is now projectile out the uh, uh. front end everywhere. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, poor Strudwick, and also poor me, and also I am a hero for taking this morning and letting Doug sleep, and also how am I ever going to clean this up? I must have used five rolls of paper towels. I'm like, the environmentalists are going to track me down. They're going to know I did this. I had mops. I had hoses. I had 409. I, I it was. It took me like three hours to get this thing under control. And um, oh, finally, I put Strebick in the shower with me. The both of us smelled and, and were just absolutely disgusting. All of this without waking Doug up, by the way. We managed it all without waking Doug up. And Doug gets up and he, he says, um, I tell him what happened. He goes, well, it sounds like you two had a lovely spa morning together. <laughs> you know, I just don't know, Dave. I don't know if Strebick will ever return to Montana. You've heard me talk about Bonner Private Wine Partnership in the past. They have these incredibly rare Malbecs that you must try. If you enjoy a glass of wine, try these wines. From the extreme altitudes of Argentina. Starts off like a fun story. The flavor is unlike any other. Blackberry, leather, smoke, little dark cherry, spectacular. All these wines, uh, they're nearly impossible to get on your own. The producers, deep in the Andes Mountains, make limited quantity. The best part, they have cut out the middleman. You won't deal with a big markup because of that. Today, we have a new offer that we've never had before. If you visit bonnerprivatewines.com slash MK, you will not only get the wine for over 50% off plus free shipping, you will also get a bonus bottle of small batch limited production wine from their exclusive wine cellar. That's four bottles for the price of three. It's a deal that's hard to turn down if you are a wine lover like I am. You will love Bonner Wines. Go to Bonner privatewines.com slash MKS. It stands for MK Show. Okay. Bonner, B-O-N-N-E-R, privatewines.com slash MKS to claim your bonus bottle and become a part of America's most unique wine club. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.